But if there was no second shooter, then Oswald's second bullet must have caused seven wounds in two men. Skeptics call it the magic bullet. They point to Kennedy autopsy documents that show the second shot struck him on the back, well below the neck, and exited his throat higher up. This implies the bullet traveled upward before angling downward to hit Connolly. But is this interpretation of the autopsy correct? Dr. J. Thornton Boswell, who prepared the original autopsy drawing, later clarified the document, insisting that the wound was higher, but critics refused to believe him. But there's another way to locate the wounds on the president, from his blood-stained shirt. Chiropractor Chad Zimmerman believes he can pinpoint the exact location of the Kennedy back wound with the help of x-rays and a willing stand-in. The first step that we needed to take with this was to find somebody the same size as President Kennedy. We're just gonna weigh President Kennedy had a slightly unique and slight build to him as he was six foot tall and 170 pounds, which isn't as easy to find anymore. The bullet hole in JFK's shirt is four inches below the bottom of the collar. We measured an identical distance below the, the base of the collar in order to place a metallic marker that we could use as a reference point for taking x-rays. With this metallic marker in place, Chad takes a preliminary x-ray with the subject standing. Many of the critics of the Warren Commission feel that based on testimony and an autopsy photograph that the entry point was at the level of the third thoracic vertebra and in an upward direction in order to exit out of the lower portion of President Kennedy's neck. In this particular case... This first x-ray uh, agrees with the critics. The point on the shirt was in, at a point on the spine close to the second and third thoracic or upper back vertebra. However, the president was not standing with his hands at his side. He was sitting in a limousine, waving at the crowd. Well, we're going to get you in about the same position that President Kennedy was in. He was seated in a car. He had his elbow raised up onto the side of the car. Go ahead and put your elbow there. That's not quite high enough. Let's see if we can't raise that up just a little bit here. A little bit that way. Much better. Good in a standard resting position, the clothing will be in one point. By raising the arm into a different area, the fabric will elevate. Chad takes another x-ray to see how far the marker shifts. The results in this case show a significant but yet somewhat expected change in the position of that metal fragment. Wearing the same shirt with the metal fragment in the same place, we see a difference in the height of the metallic fragment from the thoracic area into the very lower cervical or neck portion of the spine. This is the same point that the House Select Committee on Assassinations placed the entrance wound. This simple experiment clears up the confusion over the position of the entry wound. But now there's one more test. Will a line between the exit wound in the throat and the entry wound in the neck trace back to the position of Oswald's gun? By looking at the photograph, we're able to pinpoint the location where the bullet exited his throat. Adding metal markers to the shirt and jacket, Chad adjusts his model for one final x-ray. Okay, we've got three pieces of metal on this film that we want to look for. The first two involve the clothing. This first mark here is the piece of metal on the suit jacket. The second piece of metal here is on the shirt. And the third piece of metal is the point of exit that we determined and placed a small piece of metal there. Now, if we were to draw a line on those three points, we would get a line very consistent with the trajectory published by the Warren Commission report and in a very similar portion of the neck. The angle of the trajectory is clearly downward. It fits with a shot that came from the sixth floor of the book depository and heads on toward Governor Connolly. 